No joke, you should probably update to this new security feature as soon as you upgrade to iOS 16.2. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here. If you haven't heard, Apple made some big waves this week with some massive new changes for privacy and security on its devices to help keep you, its users, safe. In this video, I'm going to split it into multiple parts that you can navigate using the chapter markers down below. First, I'm gonna walk you through all of Apple's new privacy and security announcements and what they actually mean. Then in part two, I'm going to show you how to enable at least one of these features on your device right now. And then lastly, the last part of the video, I'll talk about Apple's future plans and what you can expect coming in 2023. So let's go ahead and dive into this with all of Apple's big new security and privacy announcements. So Apple made three big new security and privacy announcements this week. The first is this new key verification for iMessage. Essentially, this is going to be a way for anyone who is worried about their iMessage being hacked in any way to be able to verify that they are speaking to the correct person and there are no additional third-party devices listening in or reading their conversation. Essentially, it's this private key that is shared between devices that you can verify, and it can prevent any state-sponsored tax from hitting the cloud servers and inserting their own reading program in the middle of their iMessage chain. So it's a big deal for anyone who is concerned with their messages being read, especially by state-sponsored attackers. The second big change is that you will now be able to use a physical hardware key to authenticate your Apple ID. Something like a YubiKey, anything like that, NFC. Then when you go to authenticate your Apple ID, one of the methods aside from two-factor authentication can be using a physical hardware security key like YubiKey or the others that are already on the market. Very cool added layer security for users. A lot of people who are working in enterprise already are familiar with this and it's awesome that this can now protect your Apple ID as well. The last thing, which is what I'm going to show you how to enable on your device right now, is advanced data protections. See, with iCloud, you already have some things that are encrypted in the backup on Apple servers. Things like health data and passwords. Apple has no way to access that when you back it up via iCloud. But there is other information that is not backed up or that is not encrypted when backed up. Things like your messages. They may be fully encrypted when they are sent between people, but now they'll be encrypted when backed up to the servers as well. And this covers a bunch of new data. The new advanced data protection will cover device backups, iMessage backups, iCloud Drive, your notes, your photos, your reminders, your Safari bookmarks, Siri shortcuts, voice memos, and wallet passes. Before when this data was backed up to iCloud, Apple could gain access to that data if compelled by a court. Now that'll no longer be the case. With it fully encrypted, nobody not hackers, not Apple, and not a court can get access to any of that data that is backed up inside of iCloud. This new advanced data protection is arriving for all users, at least here in the US, with iOS 16.2. But it's not enabled by default, which is why I'm gonna show you how to enable it in this video. Andrew, it seems like such a really cool, useful feature. Why isn't it enabled by default? That's a great question I'm sure you were asking. And that's because you're going to have to make sure the account has a recovery method. With all this stuff encrypted, Apple has no way to help you recover your account. And because it requires that extra step from users, Apple didn't want to have to overburden its users and now requires them to opt into this advanced data protection. But it's super easy to do to get fully encrypted backups of your data as well as have a recovery method should you need it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to enable advanced data protection. Here's how we enable the new advanced security features. First, I'm gonna head into the settings application and tap my Apple ID at the top of the screen. Then I'm gonna go down here to iCloud. When I go into iCloud, we have a new option part way down that says advanced data protection. And right now I have this turned off. When I tap this again, you can see I have more information now on this advanced data protection. 
it's here that I can turn on advanced data protection by tapping this button here. The first thing you know is that you will be responsible for your data recovery. And we can go ahead and set that up now with this tap of a button. Here I can choose different recovery methods, so recovery uh, assistance via a contact or a recovery key that I can save offline in a secure location. For many people, the account recovery contact might be the best option. You can choose somebody that you trust and you can get help in person or by phone from them and it can easily allow you to get into your account. So if you're married, it could be your spouse, it could be another family member, uh, or a very close friend that you had. But make sure, again, it's somebody you trust uh, if you ever do need to recover your account. I'm going to go ahead and add a recovery contact right now. Now that I've added a recovery option, whether it's the key or a person, I can go back into settings for iCloud, scroll down to the new advanced data protection, and I can tap turn on advanced data protection. This time I already have a recovery method added. It's gonna tell me to update any of my devices and then I can go ahead and tap okay. And that's it, you've turned on advanced data protection. Now I will say while I'm recording this video, iOS 16.2 has only been released as a released candidate to beta testers, both developer and public beta testers. So it's not fully public yet. If you're not part of the beta program, you might have to wait a couple days, but very, very soon, iOS 16.2 will have rolled out. You also need to make sure you update all of your devices as you saw during the setup process. So your Mac, your HomePods, anything that you sign into with your Apple ID, you need to make sure it is updated to the most recent operating systems. Your Apple TVs, your Apple Watches, across the board need to be updated before you can turn on the new advanced data protection features. They all have to be able to access your Apple ID and encrypt everything as it's backed up. The only thing that isn't covered by this new advanced data protection is things like your emails, your calendars, and your contacts. And that's because those have to be available to third party services like Gmail or Yahoo or whatever other email services, syncing services that you use for those media or those you know contact type stuff. There's just like an open standard and Apple can't encrypt all of that on its servers without cutting off access to everybody else. Apple's other two new security features will be arriving in 2023. They'll likely receive future firmware updates for your Apple devices to enable these new features. Keep a look out for them in early 2023. What you won't see though is Apple's CSAM features that it announced quite a while back. With this new feature, Apple is going to be able to scan your photos and look for things like CSAM, which is going to be child sexual abuse material. And that has now been completely scrapped by Apple. Apple has kind of backpedaled, changed their mind about it, and instead want to go this way, keeping things super secure as much as possible, which will also prevent any scanning like this, whether on your device or servers. Um, but Apple has backed off on this. I know a lot of people were concerned about people looking through their photos for CSAM. It's not going to be a thing. Apple has scrapped the plan altogether. No need to worry about that if that was a concern to you. So let me know what you guys think. These are big new security features. Are you going to turn on advanced data protection? And what do you think about Apple's plans to ditch its CSAM uh, abuse scanning system that had been putting in place. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Let me know all down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I got a lot more videos coming your way.